so um, this question, like the other question, if you wanted to, you could look up the formula. Because the question links you to the section, and you can actually see uh, the derivation and uh, like the formulas right there. Like you are not prohibited from using it. But I want you to do the question because I thought this would be a good uh, practice in using Ampere's law to drive from uh, first principles what the expression for the magnetic field is. So the first principle we'll be using is called Ampere's law. And just like with Coulomb's law and Gauss's law, uh, Ampere's law and Biot-Savart's law, they are one and the same law. They, you can derive one from the other. They are very closely related. And just like with Coulomb's law and Gauss's law, once you learn the Gauss's law in all the setups where there was enough symmetry for us to apply Gauss's law to drive electric field, that's what we did. We didn't go through Coulomb's law anymore because it was too hard. It's gonna be. It's going to be the same deal with the Ampere's law and uh, and Biot-Savart's law. In any situation where we can just use Ampere's law, we'll try to do that. So what Ampere's law says is. It relates the line integral of the magnetic field around the closed loop uh, that we call Amperian loop. The loop is imaginary, you define it. That, um, that line integral is related to what we are going to call enclosed current, the source of the magnetic field in this way. Uh, 4 pi times Coulomb constant over C squared. <laughs> now, your textbook uses this version. Uh, so, the, the, this set of coefficients is mu naught times, um, and the rest is the same, I enclosed. And to relate this to these set of coefficients, again, you use these two relationships that relates the Coulomb constant to the permittivity of free space, the electric constant, and this. Uh, strange relationship between speed of light and the uh, electric and magnetic constants. We'll get to this at the end of the semester when we drive a relationship for electromagnetic waves. Um, so that's Ampere's law. Uh, and just like with the Gauss's law, in a situation with a sufficient uh, degrees of symmetry, we can use this. And the idea is that in this integral, if you can somehow make enough symmetry arguments to pull this magnetic field outside of the integral, you can solve for it. That's really the whole idea. So in this setup, we have a transmission line. Let me just label that as my current running over some ground. That's at some distance. Let me call it capital D. And uh, let me draw a side view or a different view where I can imagine looking at this transmission line from this perspective. Uh, from that perspective, what I would be seeing is I have current that's coming towards me. And I guess I still have ground down here. And, um, and yeah, so this setup looks like it will have the cylindrical symmetry, as in you can... Um, you can translate the line sideways, or in this view, translate line into the page or out of the page. Nothing changes. And you can also, ignoring the ground, because the ground isn't doing anything magnetically, if you imagine rotating this around, then that does nothing either. So there's that rotational symmetry. So the Amperian loop that I can imagine defining that will respect that symmetry, and allow me to figure something useful would be an Amperian loop that kind of goes in circles like this. And it, it's good to have some sense of the direction of the magnetic field. I'm going to use right-hand rule. So with the current going to the right, um, so the magnetic fields are going to be kind of winding around the current, and that sense of direction will be in, in this view with the current going to right, at the top, the magnetic field will be coming out of page. At the bottom, magnetic field will be going into the page, something like this. So this is the rough direction of magnetic field. Or in this view, magnetic field uh, with the current coming out of the page, 
magnetic field will be going counterclockwise. And from Bill Savart's law, we have a sense that the strength of the magnetic field depends on the distance. So when we imagine magnetic field along this Amperian loop, this is one thing we can say from symmetry, that magnetic field is constant along the Amperian loop. With all of this in mind, I think we are now ready to apply Ampere's law. Um, so I have this uh, loop in blue dotted line in mind. So I'm going to write down, okay, my left hand side, line integral of B dot DL, um, the direction of the magnetic field and the direction of DL, it's in the same direction. So this B dot DL is going to be simplified as just the magnitude of the magnetic field times the length element DL. And from what I was arguing before, this magnetic field is constant along this loop. So I can say it's a constant over the um, interval of the integration. So I can pull it out of the integral. So And I can say that um, this left-hand side can be simplified as P times the line integral of DL, which uh, um, I don't have to do any integral to figure this out. It's uh, just the, the circumference. So the left-hand side becomes this simple form, magnetic field times 2 pi times the distance, the, the distance di labeled here, which is kind of like r. <laughs> so that's the left-hand side of Ampere's law equations. The right-hand side says, OK, the coefficient constant times the current enclosed. And I think the current enclosed is just the current that they gave us, 450 ampere, um, the current here. That's, uh, that's, the, that's the current enclosed in the sense that it's the current that's poking through this area. So if you imagine the area being bounded by Amperian loop, there's a current that's poking out of it. And um, so that current is positive. It's a, it, it, if we point in the same direction as the surface normal, and the surface normal is defined in such a way that it, uh, it's consistent with the right-hand rule. The direction of the thumb is the direction in which the loop is going. So all of that to say the I enclosed is uh, just, uh, this is just a plus I. Um, so I can equate this left-hand side to that right-hand side. And I think I have everything I need to solve for the magnetic field. So solving for the magnetic field, I get a pi is cancelled. 2 cancels a factor of 2 here. So magnetic field is Coulomb constant times uh, 2 times I enclosed divided by C squared times D. Let me plug in the numbers and see what I get. I have uh, two, oops, 2 times Coulomb constant times the current that was pretty high, 450 ampere divided by uh, speed of light squared times the distance 9 meters. Yeah. Somewhat far distance. Uh, we'll see if uh, we get a large magnetic field or not. So it says magnetic field to trans uh, something in millitesla. Ah. So um, so the, you know, the answer is uh, 10 to the minus 5 tesla and milli is 10 to the minus 3. <laughs> so in milliteslas, it's a 0 0.01 uh, millitesla. Oops, uh, wait, I can't do that here. Do that here. Uh, 0 0.01 millitesla. And it says, for comparison, geomagnetic field is this. Um, yeah, so if it's comparable with the geomagnetic field, it's a significant. I don't know if it's uh, large enough that you would have your health to worry it, but... Um, yeah, it's, uh, but it's, uh, I think it's significant enough that if you have a sensitive magnetometer and you are doing some measurements, that uh, th th this could be meaningful and something that you need to worry about. Even at a distance of 9 meters, I guess that's because the current is so high. Oh.